bird have been flying for more than 50,000 years, I think. We don't know. And yet they know their places. They know themselves. <laughs> I mean, the eagle does not fly at the level of the sparrow. And it does not make the nest also down there. It's always up at the top. <laughs> الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحابته ومن تبعهم بأحسان إلى يوم الدين الحمد لله نتشرف اليوم بمجالسة أحد أكابر علمائنا وفلسافتنا السيد نقيب العطاس وهو أستاذ عظيم في الفلسفة الإسلامية وكذلك في التاريخ ماليزيا وعدة أشياء أخرى um, Sayyidina Qibir Atas, first of all, I would just like to say that um, I, I have benefited immensely from your work. I've read all of the published work that I have that you've done. If you could perhaps really summarize what you think uh, is the essential crisis taking place right now in, in the Muslim world. I said it is the loss of Adab, but of course the word Adab that I'm using I think I have understood it according to what I understand to be perhaps the very early meaning of that word. Adab is a, is a reflection of wisdom because this comes from the knowledge of the prophets. It is not something you, you get from universities or even from knowledge because people sometimes have knowledge but have no adab. But therefore this adab, the way I have understood it and defined it is it is acting in conformity with uh, justice, yes? But I'm talking about the main, justice as the, the virtue, actually, the final virtue, the culmination of all virtues. Already the Quran said, Inna Allah ya'murukum an tu'addul amanat ila ahliha wa iza hakam tum bayanan nas antahkumu bil adl. There are four terms already that are very important there. First of all, Amr. Yes. It is a command. It is a command. The command meaning something to do with uh, commands and prohibitions. When you talk of command, you speak of law. B because uh, people are not living in a state of nature. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you see? I mean, law can only happen when when, when people uh, uh, have commands and prohibitions and they submit and to and so forth. Yeah, yes. I, know, I won't go into the details yes. of that. The second word is uh, ah, the ahli. Obviously it re refers to people who are experts, who are authorities. And the Quran mentioned awlul ilm, awlul absar, awlul albab. These are the people who are in authority. And of course those set in authority above you could mean also um, just governments as well, isn't it? Yes. And then you have Hakam. And that's where the wisdom comes in, because this is from Hikmah, isn't it? Yes. So this, this Hakam, this wisdom, what is this wisdom really? The way I have understood, because I contemplated on this thing, wisdom is the knowledge that tells you about the proper places of everything. Of course, all, we, all prophets have wisdom, the Quran said. They, they are given the kitab wal hikmah. And some who are not prophets also were given wisdom. The Quran says, isn't it, that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives wisdom to whomsoever he pleases. And those who are given that is given the great, very great good. The Quran mentioned Luqman as being, uh, given wisdom. And 
I, I suppose myself that some of these ancient philosophers, they were not Muslims, but they were, they were given wisdom. Because wisdom, you have what uh, some, <laughs> I talk about the theoretical, I talk about the practical wisdom. I think in their case, their theory and the practice deals mainly with uh, the world of empirical things, like Aristotle and so yes. on. They are dealing mainly with things. I mean, it's obviously through wisdom that they, they elaborated and classified logic, knowledge. And all these things must come from wisdom, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Although maybe they themselves did not realize that. They think it's coming from their own minds, yes? You speak about logic, you speak about genus, difference, species. Now, why? Of course, they observe. They can see that, you know, there are, there are all kinds of things in this world. There are things that grow. There are things that, uh, but then cannot move, like plants and so on. There are things that also grow, but they can move, animals <laughs> and so on. And then from there, gradually, you have genus, species, difference, isn't it? Yes. So all this is part of wisdom, obviously. Recognizing that. Yes, and now that's what I said, the, the knowledge of the proper places of things. That means everything has got a proper place. place. Yes. That also is from the Quran. The Quran says about this thing, uh, that there is a maqam ma'loom. Yes? And then, Ma minna illa uh, yes. and then the, the Quran said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created bil haq. Haq means, of course, in English, very difficult. I always say reality and truth, or true real, because that's what haq is. It's not just truth, it's also real. Yes. That means what we are saying is that this, the quality of truth is a reality also. It's, it's not just um, relative. Tr truth, it's not just prop propositional. Yes. It's not a quite quality and property of sentences. Yes. But also we are saying this ontological also. Yes. That things are already established in reality. And and they have proper places. You see, and therefore wisdom is knowing how to deal with these things, to put them in the proper places in our minds. And and this adab is conformity with that knowledge. When you conform to the proper places of things, then that, con that action that you do, that is what adab is about. So, and if, for example, you do that, then the condition that results from that is justice. Is the, the word adab. Yes. Therefore, justice is a condition of things being in their proper places. Now, that is what is lost in the, in, in the Muslims.